Hello, so this is part two from the video that I posted yesterday in regards to obtaining lawful evidence. So within that video, I stated that control your emotions. To go in further detail to what I meant by control your emotion, it does not mean hide your emotions. It's okay to show your emotion or display your emotions because you want people to see how you feel when you're in this situation. Showing your emotions will help you in the long run because it will show if you was mad, sad, depressed, hurt. And if you hide those things from witnesses, then it's hard to distinguish how you felt. When I say control your emotions is don't let your emotions get the best of you where you are in a losing battle. When someone makes you mad, don't allow your emotions to want to cause physical harm to someone because then you will become the aggressor. And when you become the aggressor, then that other person is becoming the victim. And you never want to allow someone to be the victim in a situation because you are being victimized. But but it's being tricked into becoming the aggressor. So when you control your emotions, you may think clearly and you may make the right moves. It's okay to, if you have to cuss, scream, cry, do what you have to do, but just control it to the point where you have control and, and you're empowered over what you're going to do next. Because the reason why you want to bring that up, because when we go back into this battle, we are trying to stop these people from harassing us. And in order to do that, like I stated, I feel you have to do it in a lawful manner. When I first was getting targeted, I went to seek legal counsel. And upon seeking legal counsel, the lawyer that I spoke to stated, the only thing you can do is not break the law. So follow the law. And I was like, okay. And he was like, because it pretty much, I can't help you without any proof of this stuff that has happened to you. So obtain evidence and don't break the law. Good advice. So I want to give that advice to you as well. So we know that we are being caused emotional distress. You can sue someone for physical pain and suffering right but you can also sue someone for emotional distress that's why I said target one situation so that you can get enough evidence to go after whoever you need to especially like in the workplace because I get targeted a lot with workplace mobbing so that you can handle that situation or if you're school age so that you can handle that school age or if you're in college or anywhere try to seek one area so you can get the information to prove that you are being harassed not only due to this targeting but in general when people break the law there's consequences so in the court of law you can sue someone for injury, right? Which is called pain and suffering. But you can also sue, one, sue someone for mental anguish, which is called emotional distress. However, to prove pain and suffering, you need a doctor's note, proof, x-rays, whatever, to show that you're injury. Now, when proving emotional distress, and emotional distress, if you don't know, can be classified as symptoms of anxiety, depression, frustration, insomnia, or loss of friendship. So unfortunately, to obtain this type of ed evidence, you may need a paper trail of talking to some type of psychologist, some professional licensed counselor, or your therapist. So they can write a mental health um, narrative based on their evaluations. In some cases, your friends or family or family physician can also document their observations of what are you going through. Like they can say, yes, I saw so-and-so crying. Yes, um, I seen so-and-so you losing sleep or so-and-so hasn't been showing up to work. So your co-workers, anybody can also be a witness in this situation. So let's pretend that you have a situation at work where they keep harassing you, lying on you, and you already document this. You're keeping a journal, right? So keep your personal data, your video journals, anything that you can to document when it happened, what time, what happened, and how that, um, how, what was the conclusion of that day. So let's give ourselves a scenario because this is something that happened to me. So-and-so kept taking your paperwork 
and when they take your paperwork is making you look incompetent at your job making you like you know what you're doing on top of that so and so is talking about you in a form of discrimination so you keep documenting it and you're also documenting that you are going to your supervisor your supervisor is doing nothing about it you go to hr HR is doing nothing about it. So now you're getting time to say, you know what, I can't go to work because I feel uncomfortable. It's a um, hostile environment. So here we go. Now let's get into the details, right? So remember everything is like a game of chess. Your goal is to remove your opponent without your opponent knowing what you are doing. So don't go around saying, I'm documenting what you're doing. I know you're harassing me on purpose. That's why I say don't post all your evidence. Don't show people what you have. Show them the main things that is obvious, but don't show them everything that is not obvious because you need all that document to tie together to create one documentation proof of evidence. So play stupid, but don't be stupid. This is a true story. This is what happened to me. Okay, so examples right now you go to your doctor you get prescriptions because now you feel i need to cope i need some anxiety pills some depression pills document that as well and overall all these things can help your claim even if you don't take these items okay and then you put all of this together and then you start the process of seeking legal counsel and then you give your lawyer or whoever you need HR all this documentation, including notes of I caught off on this day, including notes of I told my supervisor this person was harassed me, nothing was done. And then there you go. You may have won your case, right? All right. So next, you want to know how to gain knowledge of your workplace laws. So always look into that. And I want you guys to understand that there are laws that have been implemented within, I know in California, I don't know about your state, that are there to help people with mental health, paid leaves. If you need time off, don't worry about that. So for an example, like this leave right here, the new California bill seeks to offer paid sick leave for behavior um, health conditions. Okay, so under this law, employees who work in California for more than 30 days within a year are entitled to pay sick leave. There are several ways employees may be provided this sick leave. So re look this up and read it for your own um, information. Look up the code AB1844 or um, it's also under labor law section 584. Four or five of the Welfare and Institution Code. Okay, according to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, 20% of adults in the United States experience mental illness each year. And once again, these mental illnesses are conditions that include, once again, back to the beginning, mental illness, anxiety, depression, and um, anxiety. That's it already. Okay. So, once again, all these things can be triggered from you being targeted. But we're not using the word target because we're using laws to obtain justice, okay? So, this bill was set in place to help the stigma to break it down so that people now can get compensated for time off because when you are in a hostile environment, it makes you not want to come back to work. So, you have to look out for ways to cover you so that you either can get paid time off or you can take a mental break and order you to recoup and then come back again so this law helps you take a break it helps you watch family members that are maybe going through it like your spouse or your child is getting bullied at school and there's um, now have these anxieties or depression you may take off of work to take care of these person these people these individuals and get paid okay so don't get scared. There's laws out there to protect you. You just got to know the law. Okay, so I give that one is called AB1844. Look that one up. Another law I want you guys to understand is the labor law for those of you who got kid um, school age children. Did you know that you can get up to 40 hours off work to help them in their situation? Because I know a lot of times they get bullied as well. 
and you got to take time off work to either take them to counseling or either to go up to the school to try to figure out what's going on. So under the California Labor Code Section 23.8, it entitles employees to take up to 40 hours off work each year for their children's school activities. The law applies to employers with 24 or more workers and to employees who have children in school grade K through 12. Employees may take leave to participate in activities of the school or licensed child care provider of a child. Okay, fine, enroll or re-enroll a child in a school with a licensed child care provider or just address any emergencies that take place at school. Okay, so if you have kids and you like, I don't have time, so I have to work. How can I help my child? There it is there. Like I said, there is a lot of laws that we can follow to help us. It's, um, it's just taking the time to obtain this information so we can know better and do better and win this game of chess, like I said. <laughs> okay, so don't panic. Take time. Breathe. You're going to get through this. Um, I am slowly getting through this. It's been hard for me, but um, I had to learn a lot of things about this. So I want to go in a little more detail so you can reassure that I'm not just telling you this. This is stuff that I actually been through and I have actually had to seek justice and I also have won um, um, several cases. So let's go back to refer to the new bill. This is in California, so look under your um, location to see when you take, for like example, back to the paid sick leave for behavioral health condition. Um, this bill is set in place to pay sick leave coverage to employees and their family members for behavioral health conditions under the Healthy Workplace Healthy Family Act of 2014 Labor Code Section. 245 employees who work in California for 30 days or more are entitled to paid sick leave. Employees can use this pay leave for the care of treatment or maintain their own mental health conditions for self or, or for their family members who are victims of domestic violence, sexual assault, or stalking yes even if you are being stalked the california labor code section will help you you just gotta prove your case and i don't think that um when it comes to that they seek a lot of evidence you just gotta plead your case and pretty much in writing and then it will help you get this time off if needed i'd rather you take time off than to be stressed and either want to hurt yourself or someone else is sometimes it just take you walking away from a situation and coming back to it like i said i got harassed a lot in the workplace and my child got harassed a lot in school where i had to take time off because i didn't know what was going on so i would just call off and not want to come in the environment because i couldn't handle it it was too much for me um and my son got bullied a lot where it was times where i took him out of school and i put him in um, had to seek professional help by putting him in counseling and the counseling helped. It does not help. A lot of people say, don't go see a counselor. Don't do that's not true. Go seek help, whatever you need to do from a pastor, from a friend, from uh, a professional counselor who you don't know, just look up their background because it does help. I did not go in there and say, Hey, I'm being stopped. I'm being harassed. I went into details and brought out bullying terms like bullying, harassed, um, discrimination like I didn't just so I can get the professional help of how to stay calm or how to control my anger so that I won't explode so I went to seek help in those manners and you know every now and then I would bring up theories like about our community just to see if this person is going to play dumb or act like I'm crazy because if they distinguish that you are crazy they will have the right to do a 5150 if they think you're going to hurt someone they cannot 5150 you 5150 you means lock you up in a crazy home if you're not intent to cause harm only if you have the intent to cause harm but it's based off of their discretion so that's why you gotta be careful of what you say because if you go in there like I'm so mad I feel like I'm gonna hurt somebody because Okay, there it is there. Then they have the right to hold up. Now that HIPAA law does not pertain to you anymore, they have a right to disclose that information to um, the local 
facilities, mental facilities are police officers because now you're saying you might hurt someone. So be careful. You choose your words wisely. I hope this helped. Those of you are seeking help, we are in this together. Don't give up because I'm not giving up.